Is this just fantasy? Why, yes, it is a fairy tale by Neil Gaiman, uh, illustrated by Chris Rydell. This is The Sleeper and the Spindle. So this is a Neil Gaiman riff on Sleeping Beauty, which is another a fairy tale that I've talked about before when I talked about the book Briar, which I'll be coming back to very soon because I'm a huge fan of it. Um, but this is, yeah, it's, it's not a comic. It's, it's an illustrated short story, uh, or illustrated fairy tale. And I picked this up just because one, I love Neil Gaiman, two, I love fairy tales and three, I thought the art looked really beautiful. And so we're just going to kind of go through this and I will give you enough of the story uh, to follow along here, but not all of it because I really like this and I think if you're interested, you should pick it up. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and get into it. I mean, first off, it's a gorgeous cover um, and uh, we will learn the identity of uh, both of these people. Well, you know, you will if you read it. So, like all good fantasy stories, we have a map. And this really in beautiful, very intricate map of uh, the, the lands uh, we're involved in this time. Although not labeled, which is interesting. But you can see in here little demarcations of uh, cities or towns or castles. Right, great in here. Uh, farms, maybe. But then, yeah, these, these nice jagged mountains, uh, this river flowing through here, and uh, yeah, we're dealing with, you know, a, a mountainous place. And that, that tracks because uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty, or, you know, it's one of the Grimm's fairy tales, and, and if you look at many German fairy tales, they often invoke mountains. Uh, there's more mountains in them than there are, you know, oceans and and seas and such. And that comes simply down to geography. They have mountains in Germany and not too many seas. So, yeah, mountains feature prominently in, in this tale. Um, and it's, yeah, I think it's really fascinating. So, yeah. We have our first illustration, and I like I like the form that these illustrations take. Uh, with you know, a lot of them have these these borders around them. Uh, usually, it's it's black and white, and if there's a color, a uh, hold color, it's red. Uh, not a really hold color, but just yeah, a single color. So I, I like the the monochromatic look, or I guess you could technically call it duotone look of them. Uh, and uh, Chris Rydell's got some really great uh, hatching and just, yeah, great textures in here. And that's, that's how you do it with a, a black and white uh, piece here is, is you have to vary up your textures if you're going to have it read like it's a separate plane. Uh, but right in here we have our uh, three of our, of our main characters here, which are three dwarves. And I love their little, little, uh, like, candle, uh, like, torch hats, you know, like, or, you know, just to see their way, uh, through the dark. Uh, I just, yeah, and just, yeah, well-designed, interesting. And, yeah, we have these, these thorns weaved through here with, you know, the skull showing right here. And, uh, that, that will come into play. You know, once you know the story like I do, it definitely, like, all these little things read really well. And also, I do like the, the change in name, the sleeper and the spindle. It's like, I know what I'm, I know what, what, uh, fairy tale we are covering, but I also can tell that, oh, it's, it's maybe not exactly the thing that I've heard before. Yeah, more black, white, and red. It's lovely, you know, these, these skulls down here, all these thorns, and yeah, our, our three uh, dwarves here, each with a, a different design, you know, full beard, mustache, no beard whatsoever, and they've been walking for a while because their candles have wore down, but yeah, not, yeah, 
Nice little characters there. So here we are, our first page here. And there's usually going to be a couple of illustrations across the pages. And I just, yeah, we got our, our, our lovely mountain here and our lovely dwarves here. And what I also enjoy is that Chris Rydell will draw, often draw things in the illustrations that are not referenced in the text. So like this big guy, this big troll guy, like I don't even think there's a single line in here that refers to that that dude. But I just love that like he's walking around in the, the caverns under these mountains just like these guys are. Yeah, and I just I love their kind of, you know, cobbled together outfits here. Uh, real great expression on their faces. Um, yeah, and making these, they're not just like short people. Like they feel like they're, you know, a, a fanciful creature, you know, a magical creature here. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. I also like that this sword pommel has a face. It's really nice. Um, but one thing I will say is, uh, there is something special about it being an illustrated book rather than a comic or a short story without illustrations. I think they're really using the format well, as I feel like Neil Gaiman knows how to how to collaborate with an artist. And so I really love this page. Uh, we have uh, our, our protagonist, I would say. Um, and I won't, I mean, you find out very easily or you find out who she is and that she's another, another fairy tale character, a fairy tale princess, but she's further along. She's been through her version of a story. And she, this is uh, Snow White. And she's our protagonist. And I love that, yeah, this is her, her wedding dress. Because she's about to be married. But she's just not, you know, not looking for it. Not feeling it. And, uh, yeah, I just love all the, love these little skulls in here. And I also love this big bat collar. Yeah, and this, this armor sitting over here. Yeah, she's, yeah, it's. It's just a great illustration. But anyway, I was saying, I think that there's, they're, they're using the format to a really good effect because we have illustrations that are both in, uh, showing us what is being described, but also embellishing upon it. Uh, they're adding details in there that are not present in the text. But if it were just a comic rendition of this story, I feel like we would lose a lot of the wonderful personality that is in each line uh, written by Neil Gaiman. Because he has very fun dialogue, of course. But his gift for character description and... Uh, the way he moves the plot along, the fact that he just, yeah, he puts so much personality uh, into every line. Like, he, at one point, points out that he he's not going to give many characters names in this. Um, and I think that, like, the way he does it is really clever. And you really couldn't do that in a comic adaptation, or it would be difficult. You would just be packing the comic with text boxes. And I just think it's it's overdone. It would be overdone. It would be too much reading. It would be too much to read for a comic, uh, but it's not so much for here. But yeah, it, I just think it's, it's a great balance here. And I also love how they pull out little bits of text to go along with an image. Like each hammer blow sounded like a heartbeat. Yeah, our dwarves here. Outside in the sunshine, you know, and like each each illustration has a nice mood to it And also there's these nice little incidental uh, touches here and We come to learn that there is uh, is uh, they're on their way to bring a gift for the Queen's uh, marriage it is uh, and the Queen in question is Snow White 
and they stop at this inn that's on the other side of the mountain uh, from where she lives, and uh, this these people are complaining that there is a plague where people are falling asleep uh, and not waking up. And basically, uh, that, yeah, that, that is like the kind of uh, ticking clock is that this, this uh, curse or this plague of sleep is spreading and it keeps spreading further and further out from where it started. And uh, it has to go across the mountains to get to... Uh, Snow White's kingdom. Uh, but yeah, there's just fun little details like in the way it describes certain people and then there are uh, details in the drawing that reflect that. And what they go on to explain is that the essentially the epicenter of this sleep plague is the castle of Sleeping Beauty. And they kind of give you a quick rundown of the Sleeping Beauty story where she is um, cursed by, by a witch or by a fairy to sleep forever. Um, and that essentially that curse is spreading uh, further and further out. And uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. It's a way to add some... You know, immediacy to a, a fairy tale premise. I really love this illustration of uh, a, a sleeping uh, milkmaid here. She's got plants growing on her. This this poor dairy cow's got lots of plants growing on him. Love his sp splayed hoofs here. Just looks really nice. Uh, the grass looks great. I love the mushrooms growing out of the bucket. And yeah, like the, the, the decrepit nature of the the house and everything it's you know and just even even further further back you have this you know the sleeping horse and yeah it's just it's such a great uh great it's just such a great powerful image and yet it, and it works really well with uh our our text here so yeah it, it's yeah this is a great marriage of of illustration and text speaking of marriage she's in her wedding gown but when she finds out what the problem is, she decides she's going to do something about it. And so she armors up and, and rides out. And I just, yeah, I love, love the attention of these little red skulls here. And I, yeah, it's, I also love uh, Snow White being the protagonist. And the main reason that I like that is, and they, they make some mention of it, although they don't belabor her story they do not go over the snow white story as clearly as they go over the sleeping beauty story and that's because the sleeping beauty story is what we're telling not snow white's but we do get some hints at who uh who she is and her story and one of the things that i think is really brilliant is like so the sleeping curse is spreading and so every person that comes across it or that it spreads across falls asleep and can't wake up. But the dwarves are able to resist it because they're magical. And I, I'll buy that from, from Neil Gaiman. Uh, but she can also resist it because she was once put under like a magical sleep spell as well. Because that happens in, in her story. She's, she's, yeah, and then eventually woken up. Um, but... You know, and that's also explains why she's buddied up with the dwarves and everything. But yeah, I just love that. Yeah, she has a special magical resistance to the sleep, and so uh, yeah, we move along. We go on on a journey with them. Yeah, and it just yeah, what a great image. You know the the size order here, and uh, yeah, I just there's something really fun about this group of people going off to stop it because they don't even know what they have to do to stop it. And I also love, the, yeah, here's where I get, yeah. This here. The queen had a name, but nowadays people only ever called her your majesty. Names are in short supply in this telling. I just, yeah, I love that. It's just fun. It, it, it shows, it's the personality of Neil Gaiman. And that's, that's what, that's what I bought this for. 
And we have here like a sleeping like troll or something underground. Little touches of red in there. But yeah, like look at look at how robust these lines are. It's really something. And it's just, yeah, it's a lovely, it, it's just a lovely and interesting retelling. Like, here's a guy covered in cobwebs, you know? And they kept talking about, like, a bosomy lady in the inn, and we get, we get her, I think we got her earlier, too. We got a spider coming out of her riz ear. I don't know. It's just, it, it's just full of personality, and, yeah, I love, like, all the cobwebs coming off this person. I feel like... A, as an illustrator, this would be a just a fun story to draw. Um, yeah, it's it's really something, and uh, yeah, that we're getting to like the the creepy flowers or roses or what have you, and the thorns because those are spreading as well. And she's and she's she's gonna sleep for a little bit, but uh, they they're gonna hopefully be able to wake her. Yeah, just every every image, of course, is great is well composed, but because you know you can plan that for an illustration like this, for an illustrated book like this. But yeah, look at all the detail in there, and the way he just adds like here like some lateral lines across to differentiate that texture enough so that it it pulls it forward and differentiates it from this texture in here. From all these plants yeah, and all the vines growing up on uh, Sleeping Beauty's tower. You know, he adds he adds little names in here like the Forest of Akhair and, and stuff like that. But that's just so that there's something a little bit more than just the forest, the castle, you know, because that can get a little mundane. But yeah. Yeah, they're making their way. And here we have our, our, our sleeping youth here. Oh, all these little skulls in here. All that hair, it's great. And then here is this, this, this old lady. Who's watching over her. And she's yeah, ate her meal in silence. Yeah, and he also has a gift for just the very simple line, like the fair-haired girl in the high tower slept. It's like that could be the opening line to, to, to some to Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just really great prose. Yeah, and they're coming to the castle, all these people sleeping, all the animals sleeping. Such a nice, yeah, all these are great touches. I also love all the cobwebs on these people. But what's great is that these sleepers are like following them. They're actually like sleepwalking towards them and they're slow. They're kind of like zombies. And it, it's like creepy and also unnerving. And you're like, okay, something's motivating these, these people, these sleepers to chase them. And then you have this great, uh, scene right here where they're all chasing him again. It's like a zombie movie, and I really, I just dropped that on you. But surprise, yeah, they've been, yeah, yeah, like their sleep, the sleepwalkers or the sleepers are sort of able to recognize or know that they're present. Yeah, so many great characters. It's yeah, and like, yeah, you can kind of figure out who each one is just by looking at them for a while. Like a flower girl here with a flower thing on her head. Got some soldiers in here. Yeah, some old men, some young ladies, some... Yeah, just all sorts of folks in here. And I love these. this person coming down from uh, the window up there. And these bodies just falling. Yeah, it's great. It's just, yeah, it's a fun scene. Yep, and there we have the, this old lady who's watching over the sleeper, and she's got got the spindle, and it looks like she's about to stab her. She's got all these all this cutting equipment. She's just been yeah, she's just super old lady. 
So here we have, uh, you know, like, like these are some guys that they, they, they evaded, they passed. And then uh, what I love here about this is this is her sort of recollecting her story. And so we get an image of uh, the, the queen and her, her poisoned apple. And uh, basically like how she, she's run afoul of uh, witchcraft before. And so yeah, I just, yeah, it's, yeah. And then it's like, I want to see that story told now. That story illustrated by Chris Rideau and written by Neil Gaiman. And here she's being lured into sleep. And the kind of danger that that poses. Just a real great evocative imagery. Yes, yeah, so this is her, I guess, dreaming, I think. And this, yeah, this is maybe my favorite image here. Is this great image of uh, a potential hero who died in the tangle of 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 vines uh or the tangle of thorns really and uh yeah it's such a great image yeah great image after great image let me get further and further along you know she's cutting her way through and we're getting close to our our conclusion here you know the old lady and the dwarves and um, I'm not going to spoil what the, what the, what, you know, what, what happens in the end. You know, I'll show you this amazing image here. Love the flower behind her ear. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, classic fairy tale image. Yeah, and this, and she knows to do this because this is how she was woken up from her magic sleep. You know, we passed some art uh it's amazing of course but i you know like i said i don't want to spoil anything you know but we have this amazing uh image of her underneath a tree and i just you know might leave us leave us with this you know or, or possibly just with here at the end you know in this magical world with dragons and such um i would love to see the, this team up again and another fairy tale and another map uh but yeah that is uh, the sleeper and the spindle um and i i highly recommend it especially because i didn't cover everything i didn't cover you know the the ending or anything like that because i want people to read this i want people to look into it and uh I'm always going to be a big fan of people reinterpreting, rewriting, updating fairy tales because I feel like there's there's something there's, there's a great connection to our ancient selves through folk tales and I think if uh we can bring something of who we've become with who we were if we can bring something of who we have become to who we were, I think that can create some amazing art. But yeah, uh, wonderful stuff. And um, yeah, I look forward to looking at more Neil Gaiman stuff. But in the meantime, uh, if you're, you're looking for something else fun to read or, or, or what have you, Please check out my comic, Sidequesters. Uh, you know, I, I mine has a map too. See? And uh, yeah, it is uh, an, a, a fantasy adventure with uh, these two at the center of it. And uh, I also have some uh, short stories about magic users and witches and such. Uh, fits in with the, the theme of the... Sleeper in the Spindle. And um, I also, I just did a Halloween special with Sidequesters uh, for, and Haxon, I guess, um, that I put out on my uh, Global Comics page. So you can read that there. You can read all these books there, or you can buy them on my website. 
Uh, if you want some other kind of comic stuff, check out Three Panel Origin. It's my weekly web comic. This is a, a printed, uh, collected edition for um, the first three years, but it's been going for much longer than that. I have some short stories with those characters. It's the kind of the vibe of the tick. Um, you know, or I take a character that has a weird superpower and tell their origin. But yeah, I uh, would appreciate it if you check out my work. Um, but definitely check out The Sleeper and The Spindle.